Fantastic. And we're going to start standing and then go down to the ground and then come up again. So we'll start standing. You can keep your cushion close, but um, just for afterwards. And then first of all, we'll keep the feet parallel. So you look down at your second toe. Basically, we're going through all the exercises again. Second toe, middle of the knee. You can feel your the bones here. So right, the big hip bone comes into here. Place your right hand on your chest and your left hand on the sacrum. And on the inhale, we're going to press the left hand forward, sacrum forward, without moving, but just pressing. And on the exhale, we're going to press the sternum, or spine, down and towards the spine. Just take a moment to settle into this slightly different rhythm of breath. You can really let your abdomen open on the inhale and the spine lengthen as your hand goes into the chest. We imagine the buttocks, we pull back and the buttocks go towards the heels. And then release the hands. Imagine you have a pointed hat on your head. So you lift the crown of the head up towards the sky. The back of the neck opens. Your feet go into the ground. You have the triangle of your feet, the heel at the back. And then outside right foot, outside left foot, inside right foot, inside left foot. Okay, so you can see a triangle in your feet. Your shoulders are moving away from the ears. The shoulder blades are on your back. Super. Okay, so that's our upright stance. And we'll try to find these same movements when we're in different poses. So it's always this lengthening up. And then place your feet slightly wider apart and bend your knees. And let your arms just hang down and you move your weight from the right foot to the left foot, from the right foot to the left foot. And then your arms will start to swing as your chest turns with the arms. So the arms initiate the movement after the feet have decided where to go. Keep your chin parallel to the ground and let your hand sort of touch your body as they swing from side to side. So you're tapping your body. Really loosen the hand so, and then really tap the body. So it'll be down here around the inside of the pelvis, lower belly. So we're activating the sacral chakra, which will help us to come into fluid movement, the theme of today. We're going to integrate everything we did in the last three lessons, and then enter a fluid movement from the second energy vortex we have which is connected to the element of water. Beautiful. And then release. Okay, let your swing stop naturally. Notice how you're standing. And then curl your chin into your chest. Keep your knees bent. 
and let the whole upper body droop down towards the ground. The head has a long pointed hat, droops down. And then on the next inhale, you push through your feet and you curl back up again. So it's especially the upper back that curls two more times. The lower back comes down slightly differently. So when you come up, you're pushing through your feet. The navel draws you up. Okay, so your core draws you up. And then one last time. Until you're standing again. Beautiful. Turn slightly to the right. And then again, chin to chest. Come down the right hand side. Notice how you'll have to bend the left knee quite a bit. Come back up again. Turn to the other side. You bend the opposite knee and you come down the left side. And then always pushing through your feet to get the impetus to come up. One more time each side, turn and go down. So this movement can be fluid. That doesn't mean it's not centered. So pressing down through the feet and the navel draws up. Keeping the navel in, bring your arms up interlace the fingers and bring the palms of your hands away from you to push up towards the ceiling and then bend your elbows so that your shoulder blades come down okay, so your shoulders are away from the ears the shoulder blades are on the back on the thoracic spine touching the back ribs and then very gently, and this will be a tiny little movement, try to stretch your arms up without moving the shoulders. The shoulders stay down. This is quite difficult to do. See if you can bend or straighten your elbows just a little bit. And when you've got that movement, you're going to bring both arms over towards the left, reaching through the left side and reaching down through the right foot, opposite foot and come back to center and then to the other side reaching down through the opposite foot as you open the left side back up again and then one more time each side remember to keep your shoulders away from the ears and return to center release your arms And then bring your hands here together in front of you, all the fingers together. And then we're going to roll the hands open, palms facing down, the backs of the hands towards each other and the fingertips towards you. And then you open up palms of the hands and you roll your hands till the thumbs are touching back of the hands. Now this movement is new, but in some sort of natural way that we do this. Okay, so you come up and you're giving, you're receiving and you're giving. Beautiful. Receiving and giving. And then we'll turn it around. We'll receive first and then we'll give. Receiving, giving. Keep your weight back on your heels as you receive and you give. And notice that the movement becomes more fluid as your hands roll with each other. And then release the arms down, shake out the hands. And we're going to come down into a squat to lie on our backs. So no hands involved. Great. And just keep that, your blanket here so that when you come back to lie on your back, you have your head on the blanket. 
You see your head is just slightly cushioned here. And then stretch out your arms and your legs. And just lie here on the earth, feeling your body on the earth. Turn your head from left to right. And as you turn your head, notice which way the eyes go. You're turning your head, your eyes are closed, and which way do your eyes look when they're closed here? Well, you notice they go in the opposite direction of the head. And then come back to center. Place both feet on the ground. Lift your right arm up towards the sky. Look, look into the palm of the right hand. Open your eyes. And then follow the right arm all the way over to the left. So your head tilts, your eyes tilt, and then arm comes back up to the ceiling and then all the way over to the right. Just keep this movement, allow the movement to be fluid and easy, and at the same time, very focused. And bring your left hand to your navel, just to notice that this is the center of all movement. And notice how your head becomes more flexible there's a larger range of movement with your uh, if your eyes follow the head. And then release the arm down. Stay where you are. And now we're going to push through the foot when we go over to the left. So right arm up. And we push through the foot, take the left hand down, or you can bring the left hand to your right ribs. And then push through the right foot and turn nearly all the way over the hip rolls and back again. And push through the right foot, roll over towards the left, and then come back again very lazily. Basically push through the foot, turn to the left, and you come back again. The left hand and continue this movement is sort of helping the ribs to come over. So this is one of the exercises we did, slightly different variation. Push into the right foot when you move over to the left. The right foot will help you turn. Beautiful. And then release, release the arm down, lengthen out your legs. Take a moment here to notice right side and left. Changes. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So feet come up. You can always adjust your pelvis, find a good position for the pelvis. Left hand reaches up towards the sky. And then looking into the left hand, go as far as you can over to the right, come back and as far as you can over to the left. So keep the arms strong. Remember that all the bones in the front and on the shoulder are connected to the shoulder blade. So your shoulder blade is getting more mobility through this movement. And then just release the arm down. Take a moment here. And then bring the arm up again. And this time as we go over towards the right, you push through the left foot. Right hand can grasp the ribs. And then we sort of lazily come back again to center. Over to the left and back. So you can play with the dynamism of this. You'll notice that your sacrum is being massaged. Now it's quite spine. And of course the whole pelvis. 
You're pushing into your left foot as you move over to the right. And then release, release legs down, arms down. Take a moment to observe. And then take the blanket away from underneath your head. Put your both feet up. Place your feet on the ground, hip width apart. On the next inhale, we're going to bring our arms up towards the sky and then reach the arms behind you. So maybe your thumbs can touch the earth. So the hands are parallel to one another. Okay, or maybe you don't come down, that's also okay. And then bring the arms up again to center. Exhale, lengthen the arms back. Center and lengthen them back. And then place both hands on the ground. Next to your hips, palms facing down. Now we're going to move the pelvis up as well. So on the inhale, pelvis comes up, arms come up and behind you, if you can, push down through the feet and exhale, come back again. And do this movement in your own breath rhythm and you can release the hands a little bit. So the hands become nice and soft. Your elbows can be slightly bent even. And use this movement both to massage the upper spine and to connect to the rhythm of your breath. One more time. And then release, release your legs down, your arms out to the side. And then bring your legs together, a bit closer together. Push your heels away from you, so active legs. The buttocks go down towards the heels as if you were standing here, but you're lying on the ground. Bring both hands, interlace the fingers and bring the hands behind the head. So the hands are holding the head. And then bring your elbows in towards each other. Elbows are looking at each other. And then on the next exhale, Bring your head up and look between your feet and then come back down again. Come up to look between your feet and come back down again. And see as you do this, see if you can push the ribs into the ground and the sacrum into the ground. Sacrum and ribs. Lower back stays in its natural curve, if you can. Two more times. And then bend your feet. Sacrum in the ground. Keep your elbows together and we'll do this in this way. Coming up and down again. Exhale brings you up. Inhale, back down. Two more times. Exhale, up. Inhale, back down. Exhale, up. Inhale, back down. And then release your arms. Bring your feet together. Let your knees go out to the side. So wherever this position feels comfortable, the feet can be close to the pelvis or further away. 
Bring your thumbs to the belly button and your fingertips together. So both hands are lying flat on your belly, fingers pointing down towards the pubis and thumbs in your belly button. And then bring your hands underneath your thighs, bring both knees together. Bring your knees in towards you. Bring your arms out, shoulder height. Okay, palms facing down or bend your elbows, palms facing up. And then bring both knees towards the left without touching the ground. And then knees back to center and both knees over to the right without touching the ground. And repeat this movement on either side. And as you go to the side, you bring your, just try to lengthen your legs, bring them back again to the center, go to the other side, lengthen the legs. And just roll here on both sides. So you've got the strong center and this will hold you in this position easily. Super. Beautiful. And then come back to center. Push into your feet, raise your pelvis up. And then release the pelvis down, release your legs down, your arms down by your side. You take a little moment here. And then bring both knees in towards you, roll over to your right. Press your left hand into the ground and then slowly push your body up until you're on all fours on your mat. So the tops of your feet on the ground your shoulder blades on your back, your neck long, hands underneath the shoulders. And then stretch the left leg, sorry, the right leg back, put the toes in the ground, stretch the right through the right heel, lift up the inner thigh, and then come back again and do the same with the left leg. So toes into the ground, reach through the heel. Remember the pointed hat on your head. And then come back. Backs of the feet on the ground. Sit back into child's pose. Bow your head down deeply. Lengthen your arms forward. Remember to keep your shoulders away from the ears. So when we had the hands interlaced, remember you drew your shoulders down. So see if you can find that same movement here. And then curl your toes under, move back into downward facing dog, knees bent, sit bones up towards the sky. Your sit bones up as high as possible up towards the sky. Knees can stay slightly bent. If you want to stretch your legs, do that very gently. Back of the neck is long. Crown of the head reaches through the hands. And then gently move your hands back towards your feet. See if your feet are the right distance apart. And then trace the middle finger along the second toe up as you come up, middle of the knee, you come up into a standing position. Beautiful. Okay. And then come to the front of your mat. So feet stay slightly apart. And when we come into a more fluid movement now, see if your body is integrated, all this centeredness. So we're not 
like octopi, we have this center here in the belly button. So arms come up towards the sky, eyes move up. Exhale, bend your knees, let your upper body drop down, head towards your knees. Hand on the shins, crown of the head reaches forward. On the exhale, both hands come down, right leg reaches back as long as it can, right knee to the ground. Both arms moving up towards the sky. And then bring your pelvis forward. Here you could interlace your fingers again, palms facing out, and let your shoulder blades move down. Super. Okay, you can bend your elbows here if you need to. Lifting your heart up towards the sky. On the next exhale, straighten the front leg, fingertips to either side. And now here you might want to use blocks underneath the hands. Okay, or stay on the fingertips or stay on your fist. And you can either just stay here or you can reach the upper body forward, head towards the knee. Coming up again and going down again. And then bend the front knee, place the front foot on the ground, Place both hands to the inside of the front foot and then bring the left leg back and you'll be on all fours. From here, we sit back into child's pose. Keep the arms long in front of you. Draw the shoulders down and away for you and, from you and bow your head. And then from here, come up onto all fours. Bend your elbows. Bend the elbows in towards you and then lay your chest on the ground and chin on the ground if possible. And then let the whole body sink down onto the ground. So allow your legs to reach back. Remember the pendulum in the legs. So legs are long, reaching back. You can rock your hips from side to side until you find the perfect alignment. And then bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, your hands on the ground, into Sphinx pose. And here again, we're going to release the shoulders back and down and the sternum reaches forward. Next day is long. long legs so although the pose seems static there's quite a lot of activity going on inside and then bring your hands underneath your shoulders come back into child's pose keep your arms long in front of you bow your head down And then from here, up onto all fours and back into downward facing dog. Keeping your knees bent, sit bones up towards the sky, belly button is moving in gently towards the spine. And your breath is moving into the upper part of the lungs here. Feel your rib cage moving. And then with your eye reaching forward, left leg comes up towards the sky. Release the right heel down. You can open your hips up towards the left without talking the upper body. And then bring your left knee in towards your navel and then foot forward. Place the back foot 90 degrees. Bend the front knee. Bring your right arm forward and then come up into warrior pose. Super. You might want to adjust your feet a little bit, maybe move the front foot forward. Super. And then from here, we're going to bring the left arm down 
behind the left knee and the right arm over your head. And then come back up and we exchange sides. Super. And then come back down again. So as long as your feet feel really, really grounded, the upper body doesn't matter too much. In the sense of if you want to stretch a leg, it's okay. But sort of sense into this feel of fluidity in your movement. It can become a sort of dance, maybe even to the music you hear. One more time. And then both arms out, warrior two, bend the front knee. And then straighten the front leg and we'll come into Trikonasana. So the upper body turns and lengthens as we did in the side bend. And you reach your hand down to the shin and your other arm up towards the sky. Your eyes facing forward, the head facing forward. It's probably easier. Beautiful. Super. And then coming back up, turn both feet parallel. So we're at the side of the mat. And then we're going to bring the upper body forward 90 degrees and then fingertips to the ground. You can bend your knees here if you want. Reach the sit bones up towards the sky and bow your head deeply. Bring the left hand towards the center and let the right arm go underneath the left and then up towards the sky. So we're twisting open here. You know this movement. So just complete it with your breath. Exhale brings down and the inhale opens up the possibility, creating space. The front hand can be closer or further away from the feet, whatever's easy to you. You could also put a block underneath the hand. Just show you this. And then we'll change sides, so left hand on the ground or on a block. And then right arm first underneath. And then on the next inhale, right arm lifts up and the whole upper body turns. Keep this movement beautifully fluid. There's no rush. And observe all the different parts of your body. So you've learned now to make movements with the least muscular effort or only the muscles that really need to be involved are involved. You might feel this as you move here and then back to center, bow your head down, bringing the head towards the legs as much as feels comfortable to you. And then move the hands over. So staying down, move the hands to the front of the mat. Feet will turn naturally. Back knee comes down. We were in Anjahinasana again, opening the arms up, heart comes forward and up. Beautiful. And then both hands to the ground, back leg to the front, bow down deeply, Uttanasana. And then pressing in through the feet, come up, arms come up by your side, reach up towards the sky. And then exhale, both hands in front of your heart. Inhaling, arms out to the side, open. Exhale, one hand above the other as both hands come in towards the center. And then repeat this movement a couple of times to reconnect to the breath and movement as one dance. And then on the next inhale, arms come up towards the sky, eyes move up. Exhale with bent knees, pour the upper body down, head to knee, fingertips to the earth. Hands on your shins. On the next inhale, reach through the crown of the head, 
On the next exhale, the left leg goes back and left knee to the ground. Back of the foot on the ground, both arms reach up towards the sky, lift your heart up, interlace your fingers and bring the palms of the hands up and draw your shoulder blades down. Then on the next exhale, come back to center, fingertips to the earth or put your hands on blocks. And then if you can, straighten the front leg, toes towards you. And on the exhale, bow the upper body down. On the inhale, the body comes back up again, like a wave. So there's a wave of prana or life force moving through the spine allowing for a wave-like movement. Then coming back, bend the right knee, bring both hands to the inside of the right leg and bring the right leg back until you're on all fours. And then from here, bend your elbows, bring your chest to the earth, the chin to the earth, and then release your hips down onto the ground. Take a moment to reach your legs back. Shimmy the legs back. Hands underneath the shoulders, elbows in towards you. And then draw the elbows in towards the center. And that will help you to open the chest and lift the chest up into cobra. Let your shoulders move down, the arms move back elbows in towards the center. And on the next exhale, come back. And do this two more times. Coming up, long back of neck, just up until chin is parallel to the ground. And the head moves last in this movement. And after the third time, you come back to the mat, move up onto all fours, Carefully and back into child's pose. Arms are long in front of you, bow your head down. So being with the flow means that you have a center you're always able to change. So you're always able to move with the wind, move with the different currents of life easily. So an open body can help this. A strength in the core and then openness and flexibility in the rest. And then from here, up onto all fours and back into downward facing dog. Your knees can be bent, sit bones up towards the sky. Remember the long pointed hat on the head. And then on the next inhale, the right leg lifts up, ground through the left heel and you can lift the leg up towards the sky as high as you want. And then bring your right knee into the navel. Foot comes forward in between your hands. Right foot 90, de back foot 90 degrees. Bend your right knee. And we come up here into a warrior two pose. Super. That's it. So find ease here, even though the pose is a bit more challenging. So you can move your body, find ease. The shoulder blades are on your back. And then here we're going to move between opening up and moving back, bending the front knee and keeping the front knee bent, putting the elbow behind the knee and the back arm comes up and over or along the horizon. So whatever feels better to you. And then move between these movements. Or flow, oops, flow between these movements. The inhale that helps you come up back to center and the exhale that helps you move deeply 
into the move. Keeping everything nice and flowing and gentle. And then the next time we'll come back up into warrior pose, look over the front hand, bend the front knee, and then straighten the front leg, left hand here to the hip, and we'll come into triangle on this side. You can always use your block. If not, put your hand on the shin, and then allow the upper body to open. Reach the top arm up towards the sky, you can keep your head parallel to the ground, often it's easier. Beautiful. So in our bodies a sacred geometry. And then coming back up. Feet parallel to one another. Beautiful. And then come forward with your hands. So you're bending forward, sit bones up towards the sky. Now we're going to move both hands over towards the right, just as far as you can. Bend your head. Your body is moving towards the right. Both feet are stay parallel, so it's just the upper body. Reach as far as you can with your left hand. And then come back to center and all the way over to the left. You draw the left, the right hip back, and the right arm stretches longer. And coming back to center, bend your knees slightly, and then move your hands towards the front of the mat. Turn the back foot, back knee to the ground, and then both arms up towards the sky. Heart comes up, beautiful and then fingertips to the ground, back leg to the front, bow down deeply. And then push through your feet and come up vertebra by vertebra. Beautiful. Okay, so take your block. We're going to do one balancing position on the block. So take your block. Ideally, it's a hard, Lock, one out of cork. Okay, so remember we did the pendulum here. Okay. And then from here, we're going to bring the knee up towards us and then out to the side and then back. Okay, so do like hip rotations and the upper body can move. <laughs> Okay, so sometimes you fall, you have to come back up again. The upper body can move with this. So creating looseness in the hips. Beautiful. And then shake the leg out and do the other side. So other foot comes up. Oh no, wait, sorry. Just take a moment before you change sides just to notice one side and the other. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. And then other side, foot comes up, and then allow free movement here. So knee comes up, remember the pendulum, the leg is just a pendulum. So see what range of movement you have in the knee, and your upper body can move around to balance. Okay, so keep the upper body free, and moving effectively here to counterbalance. And then shake out the leg and release down. Compare both sides. They should feel sort of equal now. And then bring the block away. We'll do one last fluid movement here. The feet facing towards the outside. Knees are bent and come into a high squat. This is always good for pelvic floor alignment and see if you can bring your upper body back so you're sort of rather than being forward you're sort of straight it's a bit more challenging okay 
And then from here, bring both arms towards the right and then towards the left and then up and behind you and over. Towards the right, towards the left and then up behind you, elbows can be bent. Left, right, up, right, left, up. Super. It just gets the shoulders going, the upper body, the legs get strong. And just continue this movement until it becomes completely fluid. And then release, shake out your arms. And keep your feet, bring them a little bit um, closer together and we'll come down into a squat. So here again, try and keep the upper body straight rather than coming forward, round the tailbone down to you in a squat, beautiful. Move back onto your heels, lift up your toes if you can. Find balance here, make this pose comfortable and then release down into sitting. <laughs> okay, without rolling all the way back. It's difficult sometimes. Okay. So when seated, bring your, draw your sit bones back. You can always sit up a little higher if you wish. Hands are next to the hips. Okay, just check your alignment here. Toes are towards you. And reach the outside edge of the foot towards you and the big toes away from you. That's quite difficult. That's the sort of alignment we're looking for. And then both arms up towards the sky. And on the exhale, come forward without touching the ground. Inhale, coming up. The arms flow. Exhale, come forward. Each time you'll be able to go a little bit more forward, up again, down again, up again. And then on the next exhale, reach forward, bring your hands to the ground, arms to the ground, whatever's comfortable for you. If you have your cushion handy, you could just place your head on the cushion or on a block, you bring your elbows here in front of you and just roll over so the upper body rolls, the spine relaxes. And allow the back of your neck, whenever it has a chance, to open up, create space here for the movement of the, of the head. And then two more deep breaths here. Then gently coming back up. Take a moment again in Dandasana just to sense there's been a change, okay, something has happened, and then place your knees up onto the ground, 
I have a block handy. We're going to put the sacrum on a block, arms out in front of you, and then very gently roll over the sacrum until you come to the crest of your hips and then move back up again. Come down as far as you can, top of the sacrum, and then come back up again. And see if you can keep your feet on the ground as you do so. Is it two more times? And then we're going to roll all the way down. Take your block, put your head on the ground, move your shoulder blades away from you. Take the block and place the block underneath the sacrum. And then push into your feet and lift the pelvis off the ground and change the height of the block. So turn it so that it's a bit higher. Feet are on the ground, the block is supporting the pelvis. And then just release into this position. It's a supported bridge pose. Which will give extra flexibility and energy here into the sacrum. So it is in the Sanskrit, the seat of the self. Connected to the element of water, to being balancing the element of water in your life. Noticing that there's a slight lengthening of the neck, the back of the head, and then press through the feet, lift the pelvis up, put the block down to its flattest position, release the sacrum onto the block, and then bring both legs up towards the sky. Okay, so the sacrum should feel comfortable and your legs should lift up easily and remain up very easily. And then release the feet, the legs, and allow the legs to be held quite naturally. if you can let all the rivers in your legs just flow down. They're so used to releasing into the earth and sometimes it's good if we just allow everything in our legs just to flow down back into, as it were, our basin here. Pelvic bowl. At the same time, there's a gentle compression of the thyroid gland at the throat to help balance the flow of hormone in the body. And then gently bring your feet back down, lift the block up from beneath you Release the whole body down, stretch your legs out, your arms. Take a blanket and cover yourself. As we relax down into the final relaxation. We 
can let go of everything here. There's nothing we need to do except to trust that the flow of life will hold us always if we remain present. As your whole body relaxes, bring your awareness to your third eye center in between the eyebrows, Ajna Chakra, the seat of our intuition, inner knowing, our visions and dreams. Now the light of the full moon to enter this place in between the eyebrows, the eye of Horus, the auspicious entrance into the center of our skull. And then allow the light of the full moon to move down your spine, all the way down to the coccyx. The moon that moves all the waters on the planet, the creator of rhythm, moves all the waters in us. It finds the rhythm of life, of growth. See the yellowish golden light, or maybe it's the silvery light of the moon. Move through the third eye center and into your body, flowing down the spine. And then very gently bring your awareness back to your body lying on the ground. You're very welcome to stay in Shavasana if you feel like it. So you can stay lying here.
if you wish, you can roll up over the right-hand side into a seated position. Remain in meditation 